want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, welcome back to another edition of The Best Movie You Never Saw. And this week, we're taking a look at the 1995 Scottish Highland epic. No, not Braveheart. The other one, Rob Roy, starring Liam Neeson as Rob Roy McGregor, an 18th century Scottish clan chief who battles with an unscrupulous nobleman played by John Hurt in the Scottish Highlands. Jessica Lange co-stars as his wife, Tim Roth is the villain, Eric Stoltz is in it, and Brian Cox doing double duty between this movie and Braveheart. This was a good year for Brian Cox in Scottish period dramas, I have to say. So, let's get to Rob Roy. In Rob Roy, Liam Neeson's titular character borrows a substantial amount of money in order to trade cattle and feed his people, but he's robbed by an affiliate of the lord that he borrows from, played by Tim Roth, and he's blackmailed into testifying against one of the lord's rivals, but rather than sacrifice his honor, he flees to the highlands to wage war on the unscrupulous men who wronged him. This is directed by Michael Catton Jones, who also directed another pretty good movie from the 90s called The Jackal. Long before he ever became a middle-aged action hero in Taken, Liam Neeson was considered pretty highbro talent, basking in the success of movies like Schindler's List. United Artists, who were attempting to re-establish their brand following a new acquisition, greenlit this old-fashioned historical swashbuckler with Liam Neeson as the star. Indeed, 1995 was a pretty big year for United Artists. They had Goldeneye, they had The Birdcage, and they tried to launch a franchise with this movie called Lord of Illusion, which was a Clive Barker movie starring Scott Bakula. But that one didn't quite work, and I'm sorry to say, Rob Roy didn't really work either. Despite some really, really positive reviews, Rob Roy faced a juggernaut at the box office when the similarly themed Braveheart hit theaters only a month into its run. In fact, it's often been argued that the trailers for Braveheart alone were enough to doom Rob Roy, with many viewers understandably opting to wait for the bigger, bloodier Mel Gibson movie, leaving Rob Roy to eke out a modest $31.6 million domestically. Which, I have to say, is not a disastrous sum considering the fact that Liam Neeson at the time was not that big of a box office star. Mel Gibson, however, was probably the biggest star in the world at this time, so it's not surprising that he stole a bit of Liam Neeson's thunder, and I have to say, as much as I like Rob Roy, and I like Rob Roy quite a bit, Braveheart is a better movie. I mean, it's a fact. So by the time Gibson's movie hit theaters, Rob Roy was mostly forgotten, being banished to blockbuster video. Although, Tim Roth, who was very acclaimed in his role, actually received his only Oscar nomination to date for his work as the villain. Now, I'm not going to pretend for a second that Rob Roy is as good or better than Braveheart. Gibson's film is undeniably a masterpiece and well-deserving of its reputation. I mean, Braveheart's a movie that you can revisit over and over and over again, and it just gets better and better. That said, on its own merits, Rob Roy is a pretty damn excellent movie. It boasts a literate screenplay that delves deeply into the heroic archetype the real-life character Rob Roy represents. And indeed, Rob Roy is a real Scottish folk hero, although maybe not quite as swashbuckling as his big screen counterpart. This is a high-minded film as far as adventure epics go. It's less Errol Flynn and less swashbuckly than you might expect. In fact, the film is even curiously short of action at times, with most of the battles in this pretty low-key. This isn't in the same league as Braveheart, of course, or even the recent Outlaw King, but it isn't trying to be. It's a different kind of movie. It's a personal drama, and some of the cast members actually think it's a better movie than Braveheart, particularly Brian Cox, who, in an interview with Random Roles on AV Club, said, I think it's a much better script than Braveheart, the other epic film of that time. Though Braveheart struck a lot more bells because of its heroic sensibility, and also because of the sheer feat of what Mel Gibson had done, I thought Rob Roy was the much better script, and I also thought, from a Scottish point of view, that Rob Roy really investigated the nature of the Scottish character that was sort of duplicitous, and the survival mechanism that occurs in the feudal chain. My character, Killern, was sort of the quintessential fallen angel turned bad guy. It was an interesting character to create. I don't like being around him, I just didn't like the guy, I thought he was horrible. Indeed, 
Brian Cox is absolutely hiss-worthy as Kalern, although nobody steals this movie like Tim Roth. Man, Tim Roth is totally amazing in this movie as kind of this effeminate swordsman who everybody underestimates because, you know, he wears, you know, frilly clothes, doesn't seem like a physically strong person, but once he pulls out a sword, he's unstoppable and deadly as hell. So, Rob Roy is a pretty solid vehicle for Liam Neeson, long before he ever really became a true action hero, with it making brilliant use of his physicality, as well as his more romantic side, which at the time made audiences swoon. I remember my mom being absolutely in love with him in this movie. He's ably supported by a great cast, which of course includes Brian Cox, Eric Stoltz, who pulls off a not bad Scottish accent, I thought, John Hurt, who's always good in these types of movies, and as I mentioned, the Oscar-nominated Tim Roth. The only person in this movie that kind of rubs me the wrong way a little bit is Jessica Lange. I think the role is good as his headstrong, independent wife. I just don't think that she was particularly well cast. Her Scottish accent is a little bit cartoonish, I think. But I have no choice unless I give him up entire to his enemies. But then again, what do I know? I'm not Scottish. And in fact, most of the people in this movie, other than Brian Cox, aren't Scottish either. Now, if people remember this movie at all, and if the movie has a signature scene, it's the finale in which Rob Roy faces off with Tim Roth's Archibald Cunningham. They have this sword fight that goes on and on and on and is thrillingly choreographed by William Hobbs, who's probably behind all the best sword fights in screen history, at least from the 1970s onwards. The two of them just hack away at each other with swords and they have such a different way of fighting. Tim Roth's character is really fast and lean and gets in and cuts him to pieces, but Liam Neeson is just a hulking beast that will not be cut down and it is brutal. If the movie is short on action at all, it really makes up for it in the finale because man, this is one tough ass scene. There's a lot of good things about this movie though, it has a great soundtrack by Carter Burwell who isn't really known for these types of movies and as everybody mentioned the screenplay by Alan Sharp is really good. Michael Canton Jones seems to have been kind of forgotten in recent years. He kind of disappeared after he was saddled with Basic Instinct 2 which I think was a bad enough film that well a lot of people just you know thought that bad movie means a bad director but he wasn't a bad director at all. I mean, look at his filmography, he's directed some really good movies. He did Scandal, Memphis Belle, The Great Doc Hollywood, which is a future best movie you never saw, I can tell you that much, This Boy's Life, which gave us Leonardo DiCaprio, and after Rob Roy, he went on to direct The Jackal and City by the Sea. So yeah, Basic Instinct 2 was bad, but he was a pretty solid director. It's too bad he hasn't really made a comeback because he was pretty slick with period epics. I think Rob Roy is a really good movie, and it's a movie that I think a lot of Liam Neeson's fans haven't seen or even ever heard of. You gotta check it out because really this is one of the best movies you never saw. It's pretty easy to find. You can find it on iTunes pretty cheaply. It's streaming a lot of places. In Canada, it's on the MGM channel. I think you could pretty much find this movie without going through too much effort. And hopefully people give it a chance because it's a real treat and it deserved a better fate at the box office and is really a favorite of mine in the historical epic genre, which I have to say is a genre that I love. If you like this video, make sure to click like and click on the bell to receive notifications for all of our latest videos. We're an independent company, and you know what? We appreciate all of your support.